Hi guys, it's uh, Joshua here. I'm going to try and uh, do a quick demo here, a demo game over the next uh, couple of parts to show you how to build up your empire uh, in, in Planets New. And I'm going to start, I've got a demo game here uh, that I made. It's just a standard uh, rule set. Um, it's using all the standard rules. Um, and I'm going to jump right in. And it's just a, it's just a demo game, uh, me versus the computer. Uh, one computer player. What I'm really trying to show here is is how to build up a fleet, uh, a powerful fleet within the first 25 turns. So typically before the ship limit hits. So my hope is that this this video series makes it a little bit uh, clearer for beginners, but also intermediate and expert players on how to get a powerful fleet going in those first 25 turns. Because once you do that, everything gets a lot easier. Uh, your diplomacy gets easier. Um, making war gets easier. The game gets a whole lot more fun when you start winning um, by having uh, a lot of a lot of big ships and and uh, powerful fleet. So different people use different approaches uh, in order to get a strong fleet. I like to uh, really work on building building up every planet that I can as quickly as I can in order to get the maximum amount out of it before advancing. So often if you look at my games, uh, you'll see that I'm at the very bottom of the scoreboard in terms of the number of planets when we get to turn 10, 11, 12, um, but then soon I start to pass the other players and, and go beyond them because I've, I've got a lot more ships getting built. So um, this is turn one, and uh, I'm going to do some of the most basic things. I'm playing as the Rebels. Um, I chose them just because uh, they're kind of a reasonably easy race to play, and uh, in terms of uh, having a heavy carrier that's, that's not very expensive, so you can make a lot of them, and uh, they're a lot of fun and, and dynamic race. So um, I'm going to go forward here and play my first turn. Uh, so the thing that I like to do... Um, is I, I definitely want to maximize um, the number of mines and factories on my home world. Um, mining is the most important thing in that first 25 turns before the ship limit uh, because you need to get the most number of minerals out of the ground. If you just do the basic math, how many, uh, how many, if I want to build, you know, for example, 10 heavy carriers, then I know that I need to get you know many thousands of minerals out of the ground in those first 25 turns. So every planet that I'm on, I need to build a mine the maximum amount. So um, building the maximum there is is the first step. Um, I also want to tax my my colonists, and I'm I take a very aggressive approach. I want to tax them down all the way down to 40 happiness. Now the reason I go down to 40, so they're they're gonna they're gonna drop by 60 here. So I'm taxing them at 84%. This is so I can get the most amount of money out right off the bat because in the very, very early stage, I don't have a lot of money to do what I want to get done here. So I'm going to cash out early, um, which will give me some time to, to do this. Now, my colonists won't grow because they're going to go down to 40, um, but I'm willing to trade that off because I'm going to start shipping a lot of these colonists off to other planets as fast as I can anyways. Um, once I set these things that's the the basic setting that i'm going to use for the first uh for the home world um for my ship i'm going to transfer up to my medium deep space freighter uh, i'm going to transfer um first i have to think where am i going to send this guy and i think what i what i like to do is my approach is to build a second star base as fast as possible now some people like to wait a turn and find that perfect um perfect native planet um this is a standard setup, so I have three connections from my home world, three planets which are within within 81 light years. And what I want to do is I cho choose the planet that has the most ongoing connections to uh, to build a second star base at. So in this case, here, this guy, he's connected to another planet out here, but that's nearly going nowhere. And then this one is, is pretty good, and this is okay. Um, down here, he's connected this way. It's pretty good. But this one down here, he's got... Um, four other planets that he can reach within a turn. So there's some advantages, and these planets are closer. So even if I have to build some low-tech uh, engines at this this planet, if I build a star base here and start producing low-tech engines, they're going to be able to reach these planets quickly and easily and still be able to be useful freighters for me. So 
I'm going to choose to go there. And my plan is to build a star base next turn. I can't in, in two turns at this at this planet. So I'm going to move um, 200 clans. And my my idea here is is that is that because I have I, I plan to build a large deep space freighter and follow it up. I don't need to bring supplies um, with this medium deep space freighter because his goal is really just to to get out there and scout this planet on the first turn. If it's a native planet, he can drop the clans and come back. If it's not, he can head over here um, and uh, check out this planet and then come back. So we're gonna we're gonna go with that approach and just drop 200 clans in there. This is quite different from from what a lot of other people do, but I found this to be effective for me. Um, I don't always do it this way, but you know, in this case, I'm going to. Um, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to build a very traditional start, a large deep space freighter with transwarp drive engines. And that'll allow me to move a lot of minerals and stuff for my star base, uh, kind of that base in the box idea um, from the first planet over to, the, to this one. And uh, I'm not going to do anything else at my star base. Obviously, I don't want to I don't want to spend any resources on anything that isn't building ships in this initial phase because I'm, I'm really focused on my economy. Now I want to, I do want to start to create pressure on my uh, on my nearby neighbors as quickly as possible, but I don't consider that to be as important because if I get enough fleet and power happening in this game, then it won't be very long before I am starting to do it. And even if someone comes and sends a harassing ship over to to bother me. It's not likely to uh, to cause me any uh, too much trouble because I can start to build some ships and eventually get rid of that guy, and it'll just cost him. So I'm gonna I'm gonna head to to turn two now. Uh, this is the end of turn one. So now we can see that my medium deep space freighter has moved over uh, to to planet 112 here, um, and it turns out to be a planet with almost nothing on it. Um, that is definitely unfortunate. It's not an ideal scenario, um, but even still, I think I'm going to go forward with my plan and uh, and see how it unfolds. It might cost us a little bit, but uh, it's been my experience that. Any set of planets can produce you uh, a good sized fleet. So what I'm going to do though is because this is not a very good planet, it doesn't have any natives on it, I'm just going to drop one colonist here and I'm going to send my medium deep over to look for um, a planet which, which I can drop these 200 clans on, uh, which would then be able to start gaining me some money. Uh, so that's, that's that. Um, I'm going to go back to my home world now. I definitely need to drop my tax rate. Uh, if I tax them again at that same rate, they're going to get very unhappy and start having a civil war and uh, blowing up all my expensive mines and factories, which I just spent. So I'm just going to set the tax rate to 9%, which is going to bring me 223 mega credits a turn and uh, keep the happiness where it's at. All right, here's my new large deep space freighter. Uh, this guy has got to build a base in a box. So I'm just going to set its warp speed. And then I'm going to load it up. Now, what I want to do is I want to make sure I have everything I need for for my new star base at uh, Centuria here. So um, I need 400 meg credits, and I need to have um, I've got 44 or so there. I'm going to need 340. This is a, this is a star base cost um, and 900 meg credits. But in addition to that, I really need to be able to get mines going on the planet right away. And that's really expensive. Now, there's not a lot of minerals in this planet, so I don't really want to spend a lot on mines. Uh, and that's that's not an ideal scenario, but we're going to we're going to do it. We're going to put 100 factories and 50 mines on that planet. So I need to just make a quick calculation and say um, those 50 mines are going to cost me 200 mega credits and the 100 or 300. So I'll need another 500. Now, I also need to be able to raise some tech levels on this planet, on Centuria, um, when I get the star base so that I can build something useful. Now, I think the ship that I plan to build once I start to get the second star base up is to start building Falcons. And Falcons are only tech two, and I can build them with pretty low tech engines. So um, I still think I'm gonna need about 
1500 to raise the tech level. So I'm spending a lot of my money in order to get this new Starbase up and producing a useful ship uh, that is going to allow me to start to colonize more planets as I go forward. Now, uh, once all that is done, um, the rest I want to bring is um, is uh, clans. Uh, so I'm going to bring 190 clans, which is all I can I can uh, fit on board. I'm going to load some neutronium on there. I could be a little bit more uh, careful with my fuel, and maybe I will. I'm going to slow bring that down. So I'm only going to use what I can there. There's already 135 there. I can use that to come back. So I'm going to save a little bit of fuel as I go. And um, I usually set my ships to mine sweep or sensor sweep. Uh, it's just a habit. So that's it. That's the two ships. Um, I'm going to go to my starbase now, and I am going to build another uh, large deep space freighter. Here we go. And uh, with transwarp drives again, so that I can start to look for uh, or move a lot of colonists to the planets that I need to over the next couple of turns. Uh, that's it. The planet is fine. Um, Ships are here. I'm going to head to the uh, head to the next planet, or head to the next turn. All right, we can see our ships are flying over to the next planets. Um, I've now got control of Centuria, and uh, also can look over here. I've got really good minerals on Mao Two. Um, but still haven't found any natives, uh, so not very lucky uh, there. But uh, and so I might continue to send my medium deep space freighter looking for natives. I really need to find some um, in order to start getting some money going. So this this opening is definitely not going in an ideal way. Uh, but this is an unscripted demo, so we're going to see how we can do uh, as we go forward here. So um, what I'm going to do now is I'm on my new planet. I'm going to offload everything here. Lots of good stuff. Uh, we're going to get everything as we planned, uh, the clans and all that stuff. Um, and as I said, I'm going to build 100 factories. I'm going to build 50 mines. And I'm going to build a starbase, which I do by clicking off here. Build starbase. And I've got 1,600 mega credits ready to go. Um, you can see that I'm producing some minerals. There should be enough minerals to get me uh, a small ship like a Falcon and, or a medium deep space freighter. Um, if I need to, in order to produce something useful out of that second ship. Um, the reason I like to try to build this second Starbase so early and why I consider it so important is it's every turn that you get another ship out, it's it's another ship. You've, you've got another ship that's doing something, that is producing stuff, that is moving supplies, and those ship slots are ultimately what's, what's important when you're playing under the advanced rule set um, with the, the 500 ship limit. So. Um, my large deep space freighter is going back. He's going to go pick up more clans. Uh, we might leave a little bit of this fuel here because um, the new ships that we build are going to need it. So I'm just going to bring that back to a bare minimum. Um, and my medium deep space freighter, hmm, um, he may scout. Uh, this is almost certainly going to be a planet with good natives. Uh, typically, if you're the first three planets, you're going to get at least one good native. There is kind of some scripting uh, built into to every game. So probably this has got good natives on it. This has got some good titanium. Um, what I think I'm going to do here is just drop the 200 clans here, uh, fly back, and I'm going to be bringing him back out here to build mines on, uh, on this planet. But I need to get money going over here. So I'm going to start... Uh, by just bringing this guy back, I'm going to bring the titanium or I'm going to bring the geranium home. Usually in the very um, early stages, uh, you can get you can get uh, a shortage of geranium because you're building those large deep space freighters and your home world is very slow for mining it. So I'm going to beam up geranium from this planet uh, as I head back home just so that I have some more there. I'm going to my large deep space freighter now. He's heading home and. My new large deep space freighter is going to go out here, and he's going out under the assumption that there's going to be a lot of good natives out there, uh, out, out on this on this side of things. So, what I want to do is uh, get him going over there with a really a large number of clans. Um, I'm going to bring some supplies as well. I think what I'll do is I'll bring 200 supplies. 
uh, and I hope to be able to build some mines and factories right away over there uh, when I get going. So I'm just going to set my warp speed to warp 9. I'm going to throw 100 fuel on there and a little bit more just in case it's hard to get back or I need to continue. And uh, that's it for that guy. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to build, since we're really focused on economics in this game, I'm going to build one more uh, uh, large deep space freighter. Uh, three is probably the limit because I'm running out of duranium already. And, uh, and then I'm going to have to start thinking about what else I might want to build in order to uh, keep things moving in my empire. All right, uh, that guy's set to go. That guy's set to go. Um, back in my home world, we're still taxing here. Uh, no problems there. Uh, this planet is got some mines going. We're building a new star base. Uh, everything should be pretty good. I think we're good to go on to uh, turn number four. Well, here we can see uh, the ships are heading back. Oh, my guys are going back to the homeworld. Um, and now we've got three new idle planets here. They've got the, uh, the gray brown rings around them. Well, sure enough, uh, I found a good planet here, and it's a really great planet, actually. It's got uh, a lot of high-density uh, high uh, dirt titanium on, on it, and it's got amphibian monarchy natives. Uh, so I'm going to be able to tax those guys for a lot, and there are 6 million of them. So that's a lot of natives, so we're going to tax them, and it's going to be great. Uh, all right, I'm going to drop the 1,000. Uh, I'm going to drop the 200 supplies. And uh, I'm going to head back because there is no need to continue on. Uh, but I will beam up the Duranium again um, to see if we can get another 29 Duranium. That's going to really make a difference um, on what I can build in my home world over the next couple of turns. Uh, meanwhile, I need to send a ship over to Mao to, to build 200 mines as quickly as possible. Now, one option, because there's so many minerals here, including lots of duranium, so this is going to get me my homeworld, keep my homeworld going uh, over the next little while. So um, building the mines is more important than building the factories, and that's a really important thing to understand. So what I want to do is, um, they're expensive, but I really want 200 mines there as early as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to offload the duranium that I beamed up. Um, I'm going to put 200 supplies on my medium deep space freighter here, and I'm going to put 800 mega credits which is going to give me those 200 mines. And that's the only thing that this medium deep space freighter is going to do. We're going to go over there, build 200 mines and come back. Um, we'll get factories there eventually, but that's not as nearly as important as getting um, those mines. Meanwhile, I've got two large deep space freighters again. So this is good. Uh, what I need to do is I need to move at least one of them down here now to start picking up more of these planets around Centuria. And I need to bring a lot of colonists here because I'm going to have new uh, new colonists coming out over here that there are new ships coming out over here that we want to head away without having them go back to the home world. So they're going to need colonists to pick up and head out with. Uh, so that's one. And then the other side, um, I think we're going to want to go this way and start to look at what's over here into this area. Basically speaking, the large deep space freighters are the ones that are, are moving the colonists and all the other little ships that I'm going to be building are going to be moving the minerals around uh as as we go so um here i am um i'm going to pick up again uh a really large number of colonists there's already supplies coming out over there um but there is no money uh but i am getting already quite low on money on my home world. but i'm not going to build very many big ships over the next few turns so i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to bring a little bit actually before i do that i'm going to go over here and play this star base um to see what it is exactly that I'm going to build and how much money I'm going to have left. Like I said, I'm thinking about building a Falcon. Uh, I could build a medium space freighter, which has got 200 uh, cargo, but it's tech three, so it's going to cost me a little bit more. Um, and of course, the Falcon, um, I don't have enough money here to raise the, te the engine tech levels high, so I'm going to build a low tech engine, um, either a Nova 5 or a Nova 4 or a, or a Superstar at 4. One of these two tech levels, um, generally are good. Um, it's a pretty big difference in the cost between a five and a four, but if you look at you know the fuel use by warp speed, it's not that huge. 
Um, so at this stage, I'm kind of leaning towards just doing a Super Star Drive 4. Um, I'm going to throw some lasers on there. A lot of people like to put x-ray lasers on their early ships, but two lasers are going to give you a bit better uh, chance against a, a planet, or if the other guy has x-ray lasers, you can you can uh, defeat him So with his probes. Um, the nice thing about building a Falcon with a bad engine is that um, even later in the game, this is still going to be useful because I can hyper jump around, uh, hyper jump by going 350 light years um, in one turn and, and go somewhere. So um, this is a nice thing. So I'm going to make that ship and uh, you can still see I have actually kind of a lot of money left here. So um, I'm probably going to use that money to build some mines and things over um, in this new area over here. Uh, and I think building additional Falcons is really not going to cost me very much. So it's really low, low cost. Even though this is a um, a planet that isn't producing a lot, um, you can see the, the total cost in minerals, Duranium is 8, 10, 19. Well, 8, 10, and 19 is less than I'm making every turn. So even this very poor planet is going to be able to support, with 100 factories, um, it's going to be able to support Falcon production for the next uh, few turns without having to bring any minerals here. So very, very easy to see how this can work out well for us. Um, okay, so I'm going to go to my other starbase, and I'm going to think about what I'm going to build here now. Um, because I have a lot of connections, if, I, if, we, if we hit the, the Q key here, um, or you know, use our, our tool here to hit this connections, we can see that the, the connections between the planets, these are warp nine connections. Now, if I, uh, if I measure using the measure tool, I can see that you know, a lot of these connections are warp nine. And so I'm gonna need to keep building ships. Now, some of them are warp eight, so I could build warp eight engines, um, but I think what I wanna do is keep building ships that have warp nine engines. So I'm just gonna keep going with the freighters here. I'm gonna build another uh, medium deep space freighter. This is a lot cheaper because it only has one engine. Um, very cheap on minerals. This will give me sort of a turn to, to kind of come back and, and just um, not spend very much. It'll let my duranium recover, and then I can start thinking about whether I want to um, start building a warship or, or something else. So we're just going to focus on this, and um, um, i got to make sure I turn this off beam up duranium. So he's good. Uh, this guy's going down. So now we did. We are going to take some money from there. Um, we've also got some supplies down there already. So I really, really want to bring as many uh, clans as I can. And I don't really want to bring a lot of mega credits for my home world because I'm kind of short already. So I think I'm going to just go like this uh, with just a bare minimum here. Um, there's a bit more fuel uh, to make sure that I have enough to continue. So I'm just playing this by ear. Um, if I'm playing in a really tough game, I might be a bit more careful and calculating with how I'm using my fuel and whatnot, but um, and trying to maximize every resource I can. But in this case, I think uh, I think we're doing good. Okay, my last large space freighter, which I just built. Um, again, the same thing here. I really, really want to get a lot of colonists onto this planet because it's amphibian monarchy and I need that money right away to start doing stuff with it, to raise the tech levels on my home world as soon as possible. So I want to overtax those amphibians. So I'm going to bring lots of clans over there to start uh, getting the most that I can out of those, uh, out of those natives. And I'm not overly worried about, um, you know, continuing. I, I like to come back and keep filling up and then heading out um, so that we can maximize it. So this guy's primary mission is just to go over here and maximize the amount of money I can go, I can get from this planet. I will eventually start expanding this way, but it's going to, it's going to be a couple of turns later. And this is why I always end up with such a small number of planets in the early phases. Others will definitely be um, playing a little bit differently and there's definitely other ways to go. Uh, this is just the way that I like to do it. So I'm going to play turn five and, uh, and then we'll go from there. Okay, I think we've got this guy going, just double checking everything. Um, obviously, double checking is a good idea. You can see already we're starting to make less money here because we keep taking colonists away from our home world. Okay, um, oh, this new planet, we can't do anything on it, uh, not yet. Okay, ending turn four. All right, now this is a really big thing. We are already building two ships a turn. 
at this stage in the game, almost everyone else that you're playing against will still only be building one ship. But now you've just gained a ship. You're you're doubling the in, the rate at which you are building new ships. If they haven't already built a second starbase, you're building twice as fast, two times as fast. That's huge. And in an exponential curve, the more that you have at the very beginning, the higher your your top end is. So that's that's why I consider this to be so important. And I've had a lot of success in the games because of it. Okay, so now I have a new Falcon and I have a large user freighter, which means I'm going to be able to, to check out both these planets uh, this turn, which is great. And uh, I could also go farther down to here, which is probably what I'm going to do. Because my large deep has got the engines on it, he can take a look and go a little bit further. Um, meanwhile, the Falcon and the next Falcon that I build can go to these um, closer planets with their lower tech engines. So I'm going to build another Falcon. Uh, it's going to be another very, very, very cheap Falcon. See, $62 at this stage. Now that I've already paid for the text to go up, um, this is such a low cost and yet such a useful ship. I can hyper jump, take planets over here. Um, you know, if I if I use this tool, the hyper jump tool, I can I can click here and see. Look, I can jump into this sector and uh, I'm only one turn away from colonizing planets out here um, or even over here. Uh, down in here, so there's a lot of a lot of value to being down in here, and that that might be something else that you look at for your second uh, starbase. I didn't look at it on this occasion, but um, you might want to think about that. Okay, uh, I'm going to go to my other starbase and mark that one off. Um, on this starbase, first we've got uh, a little bit of duranium that's arrived. I'm going to unload that, um, and then I'm going to go to the starbase here and and think about what I'm going to build. Um, I have enough money and mega credits and whatnot to, to think about building something. I could build another large deep space freighter. Um, I might want to start thinking about um, building something else uh, like a Gemini to build fighters. Um, it's not particularly useful though uh, from a combat perspective, so I'm not gaining much. Um, it's just really looking at the costs uh, in terms of what are these costing in terms of minerals. Uh, Sagittarius, I like it a lot as an early ship because it is very, very cheap on minerals and it stores 300, but at the same time, it um, it's uh, expensive. So because I can afford another large deep space freighter with the duranium here, things are going pretty well and I found a really great source of duranium over here. I think I might even just go for one more large deep space freighter. Uh, once the money starts to come from my amphibian, that's when I'm going to look to raise the torpedo tech levels and get myself some warships out to uh, to deal with any incoming threats. And that would give me the chance to lay mines and, and whatnot um, from my home world. So I'm going to build this uh, large deep space freighter again and uh, really going to be amped up on the uh, economic side of things uh, as we go. I don't want to beam up uranium here. Uh, but I do want to think about what I'm going to do with those guys. So first of all, we'll go over here, the easy stuff. Um, we sent our medium deep space freighter uh, and all this um, money over here um, so we can build 200 mines. Now look, this is huge. All of a sudden we are just a couple of turns, five, turn five into the game and I've got 140 titanium and 174 a turn. And because there's so much on this planet, um, these are going to produce all this until the ship limit. So if we look at 25 turns from now, I'm gonna get 20 turns of production. So that's 280 or 2,800 uh, tritanium and uh, 3,400 duranium that's gonna get produced from this planet alone. So this planet alone here, if I can find a source of molybdenum, is gonna be able to produce a lot of heavy carriers um, just from that one planet. And this is, this is key. And uh, if, I, if you're slow in developing these mines, if you start building factories and you're kind of waiting, then you're missing out on a huge amount of production that's sitting here right next to your home world. There's only so many turns to the ship limit and every turn that they can build is critical. So he's done, might as well send him back uh, and go get some more stuff. I don't like to send ships out uh, without anything. There is some advantage to scouting in that when you arrive, you can then build stuff um, but I prefer to send stuff send ships outward full okay now going down here uh, we've got our large deep and we've got our falcon uh, we've got some supplies and mega credits now we do want to start visiting these planets uh, here so I'm going to set 
warp four. And again, I can I can fly right over there with my warp four engines. And I'm going to put about I've got 120 cargo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put um, just about 50. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is with this Falcon is I'm going to just load him up and have him be the sort of scout, uh, just like I did with the medium deep. And uh, he can have a look. And the second uh, Falcon can come to do the build. And this way, I have the advantage that if if I do find natives, I immediately have 120 there, and I can I can bring more right away. So I'm going to bring that guy out there. Uh, set warp four, fully loaded. Um, the large deep. I'm thinking he might end up if he doesn't find anything good, he's going to try and you know do a loop here and and uh, colonize all these planets. Uh, so I'm, I want to make sure that he's in a bit bit more well-rounded uh, scenario. So I'm definitely going to pick up the 200 supplies. Um, I'm dropping down the the, uh, the colonists here, and I want to bring a lot of the money. I'm going to leave enough for the next um, for the next ship without selling supplies. And uh, actually, I'm going to bring a little bit less than that because I'm I'm counting on the fact that I'm going to find some. Uh, find some natives on one of these three planets. Now we don't know how much fuel is gonna end up being on that planet, so we really need to make sure that this guy is quite well fueled up. Um, this guy on the other hand does not need fuel because he can go travel for almost nothing. And uh, we are only producing 13 fuel a turn here, so we need to leave enough and kind of bank on a little bit being out there so that we can move those the next ships that we build here. Okay, so again, I'm doing this very quickly. Uh, I'm making the decisions fast in a real game. I might take things a little slower and think this through. Uh, it's really important to think about, you know, what's the optimal way. But I'm just showing how even a quick, uh, quick way of playing, you can, you can make really good decisions that are going to build a large fleet uh, as long as you do it in a in a reasonable way. Um, back in my home world, I've got two ships uh, again that have returned. So what I want to do is I definitely want to start getting more uh, more planets colonized. Uh, I'm already thinking somewhere in here there needs to be a starbase uh, that we're going to want to build a third starbase. So I need to get over there and start getting the mines going. Um, there's no doubt about it that I need to get things happening there. Um, but before I do that, I'm going to jump over here and I'm going to play this this area. Um, what I want to do here is I'm offloading all those clans. And this means I've got a huge number of clans here, 200,000 already. So um, what this is gonna allow me to do is really, really tax these natives. Um, even though they're gonna get really unhappy with me, I'm not too worried about that uh, in the early stage because it's more important for me to get this money out of the ground. And here we can see just, you know, we're, we're really close, minus 19 uh, happiness, but this is still gonna give me 2,200 bucks uh, mega credits right away to start using uh, for building mines at this planet, which are very good. Um, the other advantage here is that we are going to build a lot of mines here in factories. So right now I might as well get this before the building of those mines and factories starts to make them unhappy. So I want to really tax this. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tax my colonists because why not? Um, I can tax these guys down. I do want them to grow uh, afterwards, but I'm going to just do a growth taxing on them. So I'm going to tax them down minus 30. That's going to bring them down to 70 happiness. Um, but it's going to bring in another hundred dollars that are mega credits that I can spend. Um, I'm going to stop taxing them after this so that they continue to grow uh, so that I can come back to this planet and take them away from here. Once this, uh, once this planet gets taxed down to 40 happiness for my natives. So I'm going to wait on spending these supplies here um, because I want to uh, get the money and not sell the supplies. So I'll use the 200 supplies to build 100 factories and 100 mines next turn, um, or perhaps I'll bring another 100 supplies up so that I can I can maximize my my mines. Again, I really want to get those mines built as quickly as possible because that's that's where the production is really going to come from. Um, Probably between this planet and this planet, I'll have enough tritanium to build all of the big heavy carriers that I need before the ship limit to have a, a powerful fleet. Uh, I just need to start finding uh, start finding some tritanium or some molybdenum. So that's the next mission. 
uh, I'll also, because I've got such a good, um, good planet here with the Duranium, I might be able to build a Merlin before the ship limit. I probably will, and I can use that to, to get molybdenum if I'm, uh, if I'm having a hard time or it's taking me longer to find that molybdenum source. Okay, uh, so this guy's empty, so there's no point really in going out farther. So I'm just going to send him back, and, uh, and I'm going to bring forward now um, another guy. Uh, this guy and the medium deep are going to head out here and start exploring. Uh, again, I'm looking at my connections. Probably going to go to both these guy planets here, but from there, because I can pick up some money to bring with me when I go out to explore. And all that money is already out there on that planet. So uh, mostly uh, I'm going to bring another 300 supplies even because I'm going to want to have 200 with my ships, maybe even 400. Um, I'm getting low on mega credits, so I need to think about whether this medium deep space freighter might have to come back with some money uh, next turn. Uh, so I'm going to think about that. Uh, if that is the case, then I only uh, need 300. So I'm going to do that like that. Um, 900 clans, uh, it's a good start. And I'm going to bring uh, fuel. I've got a lot of fuel there already, so I'm just going to be pretty pretty chintzy with the fuel there and go like that. So that guy's going. Um, the medium deep, he's always going to come out with 200 clans and, uh, and fly out there. And he might be coming back. Uh, I'm going to have to think about whether I have enough money to keep production up on my home world because I want to keep building good ships and uh, useful ships that I'm going to be able to use for the length of the game from my home world. So that guy is uh, likely going to come back with some extra money. And uh, that's it, I think, for this. Um, this thing's telling me I've got four planets uh, that I haven't checked off yet. So I'm just going to, this planet is pretty stable at this point. I'm just going to double check it. And this planet is um, my home world. I'm going to double check that too. This planet is very unstable and changing the tax rates a lot right now. So I'm just going to wait for just a single check on that one. And uh, this planet, it does need to get factories. I'd like to get some factories on here. Um, if you think about the factories in terms of uh, money, but also in terms of minerals, you know, every 100 factories is producing uh, 100, 100 supplies. And if you do build a Merlin, that means 30 minerals. Um, so it's a little bit expensive, though, early on as we're trying to balance everything that is uh, going on. I, I tend to focus less on the factories in the early stages. Okay, um, I think that's it. I'm going to end turn five, and uh, this is going to be the, the first end of the first stage of this demo, and I'm, I'm going to continue with it, uh, part two, uh, from, from here on the next video. Thanks for watching.